said uh, disorganized, I organized closets, files, kitchens, you name it, call Barbara Hemphill. And 39 years later, I'm still doing it. I work primarily with businesses and organizations right now. Um, and my real passion is helping people accomplish their work and enjoy their lives. That's really what I'm all about. The very first time I did an event like this was in Washington, D.C. for the National Governors Association. And the reason I did it was I got called by the director of administration. They had a room on the fifth floor that the employees called the gloom and doom room. And that was where they put, like when somebody left the organization and nobody wanted to go through their stuff, they would put it in a box and stick it in the gloom and doom room. And they didn't have proper shelving. And so they kept stacking those boxes up and then one day the boxes all fell down and you actually couldn't even open the door because the boxes had cascaded in front of the door. And so um, they asked me, you know, you're an organizing consultant, would you come and organize this room? And I said, well, I will, but only under one condition. And she said, well, what's that? And I said, then we figure out why that happened and we stop the problem. I'm not a cleaning service, I'm an organizing service. So we created a day, we called it a file clean out day then. Well, now you have to keep in mind, this was in Washington, D.C. <laughs> And 20 years ago, when everybody dressed in three pieces, or in suits and ties, and women wore high heels and pantyhose and all that. And Friday, we did it on a Friday, and we dressed down, which nobody ever did. And the executive director came in in blue jeans. Everyone was just stunned because they'd never seen him in blue jeans before. And we all cleaned and we got it all done. And I did food like we did with this, and we did prizes. One of the things is, it, you'll get some prizes at the end of this. So what's the funniest thing and the most valuable thing and the oldest thing and the most unlikely thing? What are the things that you know you find? So we did that and subsequently they did it every uh, St. Patrick's Day and every Halloween. And they called it the Paper Tiger Day because I wrote a book called Taming the Paper Tiger and I'm often referred to as the Paper Tiger Lady. And so they called it the Paper Tiger Day and they did a Paper Tiger Day every uh, St. Patrick's Day and every Halloween for 15 years. Well, I talked to an employee a few years ago who had been in that first one and she said it worked beautifully. And then they got a new executive director mm -hmm. and he didn't think that it was worth it. They didn't need to do that. And she said, five years later, we have the same mass again. <laughs> so that's why we're here. I believe that um, having a day like this should be part of the organization culture. My mother used to say, I grew up on a farm in Nebraska, and my mother used to say, many hands make light work. And if you're trying to clean out by yourself, it's really hard because often you need to ask a question. Do we need to keep this? You know, what, what do we have to do with this? And somebody else is working. It's like, would you get out of here? I'm working on a project. But if we're all doing it together, then it's a whole lot more fun. So what Nicole and I have done today is try to figure out a way to make this as painless as possible and to enable you to accomplish your work and enjoy your life. Now, there's a big, a, a lot of components to that. Today, we're going to focus just on one. How many of you have at home a closet that's a little on the full side? Anybody have one? Or a garage? Or a filing system? How many of you left home with more pieces of paper lying around than you prefer? Anybody? Yes. Well, you might look at that stack of papers on the kitchen counter one day and say, okay, today's the day I'm going to clean this up. And you pick up the first piece of paper and you think of any number of reasons why today is not a good day to have this piece of paper. And so you put it over here. And then you pick up the second one. Uh, I don't think so. I, I think I want to go to that, but I'm not, I'm not really sure. And you pick up the next one and it's like, oh, there's a sale at Belks and I, I need to go there. And, oh, I don't know. I'll put it over. And the next thing you know, the pile that was on this side is on this side. And it's time to go to a meeting. Anybody ever done this? My entire business has been based on four words, and I have pens that you can have with these as a reminder. Clutter is postponed decisions. 
Our closets fill up because we haven't decided whether we're gonna lose the 10 pounds we need to lose to get back into that paper suit again. Mm -hmm. Or the exercise equipment that looks so great on Home Shopping Network, but it hasn't been out in, well, too many months. And then there's the candlesticks you got from Aunt Sally. You love Aunt Sally, she's really a dear person, but those candlesticks are not really your style. But if she came for Thanksgiving dinner, she'd love it if you had them on the table. So today, what really today is, is a day for you to make decisions. Now, a lot of the decisions about the clutter in your office are, are decisions you can make yourself. I mean, you know it, you just never had time to do it. Today, we're just paying you to do what you know how to do. But there may be other things that you won't know how to do. So we want to give you some, some ways to do that. I have a handout for you. I don't want you to pay any attention to the handout. It's just a summary of some principles that may make more sense when it's over. I just wanted you to be able to go back and look at it. But I wanted to focus today on, uh, this morning, on what are some techniques that will help you uh, do this. What makes it hard to throw things away? Give me some feedback. What? Sentimental. Sentimental, okay. Think what you else? You might need it later or um, something. Yep, might need it later. What else? <coughs> if it's organized, it will be a quick access for me to get it. Okay, if it's organized, you can find it quickly. You don't like to throw stuff away. Don't like to throw stuff away. Yeah. How many of you find it difficult to get rid of stuff? Some of you do, some of you don't. <laughs> Um, and it doesn't really matter. There's what I call the cost factor, which is you can keep everything you want if you're willing to pay the price. The price is time, space, money, and energy. It's not a moral issue. It's just a decision about resources. So people are often nervous when Nicole and I are around because they think we're going oh, you don't need that. We're not going to say that. We don't have the right to say that. What we are going to say is if you choose to keep it, this is what it's going to cost you in time, space, money, and energy, and is that a price you want to pay? And it's really not a moral, a moral issue at all. The first thing I want to teach you is something very, very simple, and we're going to talk about paper. This applies to digital. We're not dealing with digital today, but on down the road we can, and I have to tell you, I, uh, my biggest success story with doing something like this was with an insurance company with 400 employees, and we did 12 days, so every employee participated for, for one day. And in the morning, we focused on physical, and in the afternoon, we focused on digital. At the end of the 12 days, we shredded alone 33,000 pounds of paper and deleted almost one half of the files on their server. Research shows that 80% of what we keep, we never use. Now, having said that, my philosophy is, if in doubt, keep it. But the other side of that is, Hemphill's principle, if you don't know you have it, or you can't find it, it's of no value. Make sense? So we want to create, in your office, I have a company called Productive Environment Institute. And the principle is that a productive environment is an intentional setting in which you can accomplish your work and enjoy your life. So today, your task is to go back to your office and be intentional. This is here because it helps me accomplish my work and enjoy my life. If it doesn't help you accomplish your work and it doesn't help you enjoy your life, it is clutter. So, there's only three decisions you can make about a piece of paper. File, act, or toss. So a way to think about it is if you want to clear the fat from your office, you can file, act, toss. File means I don't know if I will ever need it or I'm required to keep it for legal reasons. That is a reference file. And then ultimately you have to decide retention guidelines. One of the things we have for today is retention guidelines about how long you are required to, to keep things. Act means the ball is in my court to do it. Now one of the ideas that I present to people that often they haven't thought about is that you can have 
a reference file and an action file with the same name. Because you might have a project that goes on for a long period of time, and here are some papers that I'm done with. I can't throw them away, but they're a history of what I, that's a reference file with that name. Then I can have an action file with that name, which is the things that I'm still using, that I'm dealing with today. And many of us, many, many people, we had a couple of conversations about it this morning, when we're dealing with action, we like paper. We like to write on it, redline it, underline it, and things like that. So often, people's action files are paper, and their reference files are digital, because once you're done with it, then it can digitize it. One of the things I want to introduce to you, and it's on this sheet, so you want to refer to it, because it's probably the most important thing I have to present today, is what I call the seven information management questions. And these are seven <laughs> questions that every organization needs to answer. And for that matter, every family needs to answer. How many families do you know right now that are really struggling because they didn't have the information they needed after a hurricane? So these seven questions. The first question is, what information do I need to keep? What do I need to keep in order to do my job? The second one is uh, for how long? So that's retention guidelines. The third one is in what form? Is it paper or is it digital or is it both? And if it's in digital, what program? Because lots of times there are, or what location? You know, it's like, okay, some people save it on their computer desktop, but it actually needs to be saved on a drive somewhere that's shared. So we need to know where it needs to be kept. The fourth question is who is responsible for filing it? A number of years ago, I was called into a company in New York City and the director of administration called and she said, we have 10 floors with a thousand file cabinets on each floor and that's the good news. <laughs> the bad news is the banker's boxes and the loose papers that aren't in files. And she said, can you help us? Well, I really don't know, but I'm willing to come in and talk to you, and let's see if I can. Well, what I quickly learned was they had teams of people that went out, five or six people as a team would go off-site to a client for days or weeks or sometimes months. And when they came back and brought all their papers back, guess what? Five out of the six team members filed it. So now we have two problems. One is we're taking up way more physical space than we need to, but more importantly, when somebody retrieves something, which one is the most accurate? You know, which one has been updated? Which one hasn't been updated? So we stop the problem very quickly. One of my principles is today's mail is tomorrow's pile. Nicole and I do for clients something called total office transformation, where we work with one person in their space. And in, when we do that, the first thing we say is, we're gonna ignore everything you did in the past. We're going to put a system in place to stop the problem. And we use the acronym for system of saving you space, time, energy, and money. That's what a system does, right? Anything that you do in your life, whether it's the laundry or taxes, you need to have a system for it. It will save you a lot of time and energy and grief if you have a system so that you do it the same way each time. I think about, I mentioned laundry because that's one of my favorite examples of, of, uh, of systems. Uh, we moved into a house like 22 years ago and I always hated laundry. I was just, anybody hate laundry? It's like, no, 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 no. And I thought, I was thinking about it, I thought, you know, Barbara, you're gonna have to do laundry for the rest of your life. So it seems like you ought to figure out something that makes it at least tolerable. Maybe not enjoyable, but at least tolerable. So I thought about what were the things that made me not, not like laundry. Well, number one, it was deciding when to do it, right? Because I'd say, oh, I need to do laundry. No, I'll do it tomorrow. And I would say that four times during the week until finally there weren't any clothes to wear anymore. So the kids were saying, mom, where are my gym clothes? So it's like, okay, my system is I have to figure out when I'm going to do it. So in my family, it became Friday and Saturday night. My husband and I are not very social people. So we wouldn't be, there would be virtually no chance that would, we would be gone both Friday and Saturday night. So it's like, okay, that's a good time. And it's on the main floor, so we could be watching a movie or whatever and doing the laundry at the same time. Solve that problem. Second part is it hurt my back to full clothes. 
So I looked around and figured out there was a, a, a bed in my house that's kind of high, you know, one of these that you kind of have to step on. Perfect, perfect height for folding clothes. There's a television in that room. Part of laundry was, it's boring. So I record some of my favorite shows that I didn't really have to look at, I just had to listen to. So now I can dump the clothes on the bed, I can turn on the TV, and it's no big deal. So for the last 20 years, laundry is like, well, it's not fun. There's nothing terrible about it. It's a system. So one of the things that you might want to do today as you're looking at your office and thinking about it is, what is, what is it that I'm doing repeatedly that I really need a system for? Because it's not having a system that makes it hard to make the decisions. The next one is who needs access? Oh, I would like to tell you the story. So we did the thing about to solve that problem, every time they went out on a team, they identified who was the official record keeper. So when they came back, John was the official record keeper. Everybody knew if there was something, just give it to John, he's the one. We just minimized by at least four copies the amount of paper we kept. Now the second thing I told them to do was we needed to do a clean out like we're doing today. And it was an accounting firm and they said to me, we can't do that because it's not billable time. <laughs> so they didn't do it. Well, I knew I wasn't gonna get the job anyway. So I said, but I bet you don't have any trouble charging the client for 30 minutes of time to find something you should be able to find in five seconds. And they didn't argue, and that's the truth. And they're out of business right now. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one is who needs access to it? So that's securities and permission. So if it's paper, it's cabinets that are locked. If it's electronic, it's who has permission to access where that's, uh, where that's stored. How can we find it is naming conventions. This is as you move to paperless, What's gonna be really, really important are naming conventions and version control. Something as simple as when you name a document, everybody needs to do the date the same way. What is the way that you date a document? And if everybody does it the same, it's gonna be a whole lot easier to find it than if some do year, date, month, some do month, date, year, some write it out, some use numbers or whatever else. So naming conventions and version control are really important. And then the last one is, how is it backed up? A couple of days ago, I talked to a company uh, who has a, a sole proprietor and he's a financial planner. And he had a whole lot of papers, which of course he's required to keep, but he scanned them, but he still had the paper. And when I asked him why, he said, well, I'm not really sure about the backup. And so the reason he had that clutter was because he wasn't confident about the backup. So I would challenge you that in the clutter that you have, every time there's paper or digital clutter, it is because you haven't answered one of those seven questions. So today, one of the handouts that we've given you is this, to collect information about, I don't know how long to keep this, or I don't know where this goes, or whatever. And part of our process today is we've created two uh, different areas in the break room. So there's one area that's called trash to treasure. And trash to treasure is where you can put personal items that you don't want, a flower vase, a coffee mug, a book, a calendar, something that you don't want. And during the day, anybody can go in and take anything they want out of there as long as it goes home. So that's part of adding more fun to it, okay? The other area we have in the blade room is what I call a staging area. And a staging area is where you put something that belongs to the organization, but you don't need it and you don't know what to do with it. So then you can take it into the staging area and then at the end of the day, Holly will go through and make decisions. Okay, clutter's postponed decisions. I mean, the reason it's in your office, but you're not using it, is because there isn't a decision. And in your case, it's not your decision to make. It's Holly's or whoever she designates to make that decision. So that's one of the things that's um, really important for us to do today. All right, let's see what I've forgotten here. Oh, I do have to share one little personal thing. Every morning I do a little devotional and I have an app on my phone uh, that's uh, called Jesus Calling. And I flipped it open this morning, and the verse was Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. <laughs> and I just 
at the lab, I thought, what are the chances <laughs> that that verse would show up today? I just sat there and laughed. I just, I just thought I had to share that with you. I thought that was really funny. Um, okay. So I think we've covered. So the principle, so the technique today is basically to go back to your office. You mm -hmm. want to go through it as fast as you can. If you come across something you're, you're not sure about or you don't go on to the next thing, I don't want you to get stuck. I want you to get, I want to think of, think of it as peeling the layers of an onion. So you're going to peel off the layers that you know. And if you get stuck, just go on to the next thing. Go through the office and ask the question. And this is not on that handout, but this is a question you could ask. And I encourage you to ask this in your whole life. It's a life-changing question. Does this, whatever this is, help me? accomplish my work or enjoy my life. If it doesn't help you accomplish your work and it doesn't help you enjoy your life, by definition, it's clutter. If you answer that question and you're still not sure, there's one more question you can ask, which is, what's the worst possible thing that would happen if I didn't have this? <laughs> if I got rid of this and I was wrong, what could potentially happen and then you say, is that a price I'm willing to pay? And that's a personal issue. You know, people often look at me and think, oh, you know, she's just naturally organized. Wrong. Nicole will tell you that is not true. I'm an artist by training. I'm a musician. I love the big picture. I don't like details. I like to start things, and I don't like finish things. <laughs> so I can make a mess faster than anybody you ever saw. But I can also clean up one faster than anybody because I have a system and I have a place for everything. The old adage about a place for everything and everything in its place, it's half right. A, there's probably a few of you in here who want a place for everything. That's, you can't work unless everything is neat and, and everything's put together. Yes? Recognize that, right? I wish I could take a pill that would make me like that. I've tried. I'm just not wired that way. So one day I was, uh, I, I love to have people come to my office because the best way to demonstrate a system is to, to see it. So I love to have people come. Well, one day I had a couple that were going to come. It was on a Saturday, and I don't usually do that. But it was the only time they could come, and so I forgot about it. And I was out running errands, and my phone rings, and my client says, we're almost at your house. Uh-oh. <laughs> I remembered. And I said, oh, well, I'll just use it as a teaching. So I walked in, I said, look at your watch, walk around, look around, and see what happens. And so while they were there, I just promptly put things where they went. And 29 minutes later, work expands to full time, 29 minutes later, it was put away. So today, we're wanting to make the, your office your intentional environment. I want in your office what you need to accomplish your work and enjoy your life. And if what's in your office doesn't help you do that, then it can go somewhere else, and that will make it an intentional environment. Does that make sense? Questions? Anybody have any concerns about how we do this or what we do? We've got recycling bins. We've got shredding bins. So you've got your trash to treasure places. You've got your staging area. Um, so you should have everything. Nicole and I will be walking around. We're happy to, we're not going to tell you what to do, but we'll be happy to answer questions. And a lot of times, it helps people to just talk through things, you know, while they're looking at it. It helps to say, oh, now there's this. And then just in telling us the story, it's like, oh, that's what I can do with it. So we're here to help if we can. If you have a very, if there's nothing in your office, if your office is already perfect, then Holly, are there public shared areas like a kitchen or an office supply area or a place that's shared that you can go and work on? That would be good too. Okay.